Now that we've taken care of the task and workflow part of the product, we need to move our attention to the scheduling aspect. So we're going to do this using time triggers, which you can access under the triggers and time triggers. So we're going to hit new here to create a new time trigger, and we're going to give the trigger a name. And then you're going to be asked to select the task or tasks that you want to launch. So you can launch many things at once using a single time trigger. So for instance, if we go here, to we type the first few letters, we can select the demo workflow, or we could go in here and select the magnifying glass and go in and select the backup task, which we worked with in earlier um, lessons. We can also set a skip count if we wanted to skip it a certain number of times, or if it's already active, not trigger it at all. And there's also an option here to include within a forecast. And we'll cover the forecast reporting in just a few lessons. Uh, here you can provide some descriptive information. And then you can also select the time zone. So this is kind of an important thing because what this allows you to do is you'll in your user profile you have a time zone that's specified. But it allows you to schedule it in any other time zone. So for instance, we could go here and under the Americas, we could select to uh, choose somewhere like, for instance, uh, Los Angeles time to actually schedule it in. So if it's uh, 1 o'clock here on the East Coast, it would re actually schedule it for 10 a.m. Um, Los Angeles time. And when you go and get a list of the times uh, where it's next scheduled to run at, it'll show uh, both your local time zone and the time zone that it's actually scheduled to run in. So the now that we've decided what we're going to run, we have to decide when we're going to run it. So a real basic one would be to go here and select daily. So I want it to run at, say, for instance, uh, 2 p.m. every single day. Um, or we could decide that we want it to run on business days. And business days are typically Monday to Friday. You set this through the calendar feature of the product, which we'll cover off in another lesson. So you could set it to like a Tuesday to Saturday if you wish or on very specific days. So for instance, we're going to run at 2 o'clock on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And if I like that, I could hit Submit and Save It. And here's my time trigger. And then after you, you, you have your time trigger, you have to right-click here to enable it to activate it. If I go back into my time trigger definition here, you'll see I've also got a new button that's shown up here called the List Qualifying Times. And when I select this here, it's going to show me uh, the local time in New York, and then the trigger time zone, which is Los Angeles. So it, we scheduled to run at 2 p.m. Los Angeles time, and then it's showing the local times that it'll run for me. Now you notice this popped up in another tab. I can close this right here. Also down here at the bottom, it's shown when the next scheduled time is. We can get into much more sophisticated uh, scheduling options. So right now we have a very uh, simple time style, but we could also go to a time interval. So say for instance if we had a process which we wanted to run every three hours, uh, we can certainly do that and then also we can go and set in some restricting times as well. So for instance we can set this task up to run every three hours between um, 9 in the morning and 5 in the evening and have it run on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. We can also go and have a more sophisticated uh, scheduling criteria. So for instance, if we wanted to go to complex here and do something, for instance, like say we wanted to run on the first uh, Wednesday of every month, uh, we can certainly go ahead and do that. So here we have a process that will run every three hours starting between 9 and 5 and running on the first Wednesday of every month. And if we update it here, and go back in and list the qualifying times. It'll dynamically determine what the what the win first Wednesday of the month is. So we'll see that it runs here a few times in February 4th, then on March 4th, then on April 1st, and so on and so forth. We can also set up some restrictions as well. So for instance, we can set up a, a special restriction where on a holiday or on a non-business day, we may not want it to trigger. We may want to move it ahead a day or back a day. And then we can get into more complex um, criteria where we want it to run on the first Wednesday of the month. But for instance, we may not want it to run on the, um, on the first Wednesday in June. And then if we update it here, 
and uh, we list the qualifying times. We should see that it skipped June completely. It's gone from May directly to July. So there's a lot of rich functionality built in here, which allows you to build some very flexible schedules uh, for your tasks and workflows that you want to schedule.